Hey guys, welcome to the first installment of Mun DIY. So to kick off this series, I thought it would be so cool to make a giant dream catcher for y'all. Pretty much this was inspired by a style shoot that we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks and we wanted to make some really cool backdrops for our models. Um, but you can also use it for special events like weddings, you know, high school graduation normal decoration at home, whatever you want. It's just a really cool way to spruce up uh, your space, give it a little bohemian vibe. You can pretty much do whatever colors you want, but we're doing a mixed metal theme. So gold, rose gold, silvers, and basically we're gonna be doing a lot of painting and spray painting. So if you do like the clothes you're wearing, I would recommend changing into something that you don't really care about if it gets a little dirty. So let's go. Okay, I guess we're doing an early 2000s throwback today, but uh, I think we can rock it. So to make this DIY, you will need a hula hoop, a medium sized stick, some yarn or twine, spray paint, normal paint, paint brushes, scissors and wire cutters, some fabric flowers and ferns, a package of medium white feathers, wire that's similar to the color that your hoop will be once it's painted, and a hot glue gun and sticks. You can pick all of this up at your local craft store like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. So now that we have that all done, we're gonna want to spray paint this bad boy. I'm gonna be using a rose gold paint because I think it will turn really well with mixed metal theme. So I'm really psyched to see how this looks on here and I don't know, I think it'll be a good upgrade. So let's get started. I'm liking how it's looking already, and let's just let it dry for pretty much until it looks dry, and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. So while your hula hoop is drying, we're going to spray paint these flowers the same rose colored as your hoop. Make sure to get the back of the petals as well as the inside of the petals as well for full coverage. So your hoop and your other flowers should be drying. Now I'm gonna move on to my accent colors, which is silver and normal gold. Um, I'm gonna paint these with normal paint. If you want to leave them natural, that's totally fine. Just buy the colors that you want. I couldn't personally find the colors that I wanted, so I'm going to paint them by hand. And you can do this with spray paint if you have it. Um, I just didn't. I had normal paint on hand, and this will work just fine. Now that those are done, they should be dry in like 15 to 20 minutes. Thankfully, the uh, fabric dries super fast. And now we're going to move on to the very last painting portion. I just wanted to add a little extra dimension in this as well. Um, we're going to paint a little feather action. So I'm going to give my feathers a dip dyed look. Start from the middle and work your way down and make sure to paint both sides to get full coverage. It looks really pretty afterwards. Okay, so everything should be dry and it's time to assemble. So this bad boy looks super, super good. I'm really excited how it turned out. And we are going to add this beautiful stick that I just found in the backyard. All you have to worry about is that the length is long enough to cut across the actual hula hoop itself. I kind of want it towards like the lower third of this hoop. And what we're gonna do now is just attach it um, and make it really sturdy. For this next step, you're going to uncoil your wire and snip off a rather long piece. Then to secure the stick, we're going to use the X method. So we're gonna go over and under one side and then over and under the other side. We're gonna do this a couple of times just to really make this secure. Uh, you can kind of jiggle around, make sure that it is really sturdy. And once that's good, you go ahead and knot the ends tightly. Maybe do it a couple of times just to make sure and then snip off the excess wire. After that, you're gonna to wanna to tuck the ends in to keep from poking anyone. And then go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. Now that your flowers are all dry, take the green foliage and snip them off into more usable pieces with your wire cutters if they're in really big stalks like mine are. 
Now we're gonna take some of these pieces that we've cut and place them on either side of your branch to make the base of the floral arrangement. Once you're happy with your arrangement, take your hot glue gun and start to attach the pieces from the bottom to the top of the leaves. Now you may need to hold them down in place for a few minutes until the glue is dry. After that, for extra security, use your wire and wrap the middle and the base of your foliage and tie it off once they're nice and tied down. Uh, don't really worry about this looking super pretty because the flowers will really help to cover this up. Now, originally I thought I would be using a lot of flowers to make it look super full, but in the end I decided I liked the minimalistic look of just three different colored flowers together instead. So once you have your desired look, hot glue those puppies down and you are good to go. This is what we have thus far, and what we're gonna do now is add the little string down. So for this next part, we need to measure the length of your string. And what I did is I measured about the span of my arm reach. And after I've wrapped this a couple of times, I'm going to snip these sides here. We have three individual pieces length. And for each section, I used about three strings, you can see here. And then I also used an accent piece as well. If you wanna do that, just um, a little gold or the color that you're using, it, it makes it kind of pop really well. So let's attach it. We're going to be using the lark's head knot. You'll want to bring your doubled over piece up and under the branch and then pull the ends through. Next, you're going to split your group of yarn into two and twist until you've reached the length you would like it to be. Secure with the basic knot at the end and let the rest of the yarn hang free. Now for the last step, we're going to take your dip dyed feathers and create a small incision about a third of the way into the stem with your wire cutters. Next, cut off a small piece of wire and feed it through the top of the feather to the incision point that you made. This should be fairly easy as feather stems are hollow on the inside. Then push the wire through the incision very carefully and bend the wire up to secure it in place. After you've done this to all of your feathers, place them on random wefts of the hanging yarn by pushing the top of the wire up and through some of the strands. Then bend the wire down to make a hook. Pull firmly on the feather until it's secure. And that's it. You have a gorgeous giant dream catcher that you can use anywhere as backdrops, decoration for your home, parties, whatever you're using it for, it will just elevate the space and give it such a beautiful, whimsical look. I hope y'all had as much fun making that beautiful giant dream catcher as much as I obviously did. I mean, look at this. Before we wrap this up, let's get back to something a little bit more normal, shall we? All right, awesome. So, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Enter in the comments any DIYs that you want to see in the future, or if you just really like this video and just want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.